Have you ever flown a model without a gyro? Some models don't need one at all, but others, like this Hornet, can be nearly uncontrollable without one. Let's dive into why this crash landing happened and have some real gyro talk. That was awful. Worst landing I've had in this jet in forever, but it did come down. But before we deep dive into the theory behind gyros, I need to ask you to consider hitting that like and subscribe button. We upload on Wednesdays and Saturdays and always look forward to your comments and questions. This Hornet was set up with AS3X, Spectrum's gyro, on the stabilators only. This is what's called an Elevon wing type. The stabs stabilize the airframe in both pitch and roll. The issue with the Hornet is that due to its rearward wing placement and long nose, the jet is very unstable in certain maneuvers, or with certain wing configurations like full span flaps. This instability is very noticeable when attempting to perform maneuvers like point rolls. The jet continues rolling, making the maneuver look sloppy. A properly configured gyro with the ailerons stabilized significantly helps here. With model aircraft and the altitudes that we fly at, we often only have a couple of seconds to finish a maneuver on the downline before running into the risk of hitting the ground or trees. The instability that we're talking about here is very noticeable once the jet goes vertical and begins sliding downward. Without stabilized ailerons, it tends to flop around in random directions due to stalling, which can be unrecoverable depending on how familiar you are with the airframe and its stall recovery techniques. So now you know why we like to use gyros. But did you know that there's a segment of people dead set on telling you how wrong you are for flying with one? If you've participated in any online discussion for RC airplanes, you've undoubtedly run into the type of person we're going to discuss here. You know the type. You did something you thought was super cool, so you posted it online. And amidst the congratulations and awe comes that guy. And he's not going to hold back on you either, because he's flown for 30 years and he's never needed a gyro. The real point that they're trying to make is that they're good and you're not, because they don't use a gyro and you do. These particular comments were directed at our Viper High Alpha demos, but what these people don't realize is that we have definitive proof that the gyro does not fly a Viper in High Alpha, nor does it stabilize it enough to do so. At low air speeds, larger surface deflections are needed to produce any measurable impact on an aircraft's flight. This is why we always recommend maxing out your servo travel to 150% and set the push rods to allow for max deflection with lots of expo to tame it. The gyro is basically inactive here. You can watch the ailerons and elevators and clearly see that they're doing nothing because the high alpha mix overrides the gyro commands. The rudder gyro has almost no effect either. All the steering is done with the rudder stick. If a gyro flew a Viper 90 for you in high alpha, then you'd see evidence of it on the GoPro chase camera, but there's none to be found, meaning that this fellow is 100% wrong. A Viper 90 can fly in high alpha because of its wing design and crow configuration we've developed for it. It's simply aerodynamics at work. Obviously, some of these people are trolling. They're looking to elicit a negative response for any number of reasons. Unfortunately, that kind of behavior, even if not designed to provoke, does not help further the goal of promoting the hobby and bringing new pilots into the joy of flight. For years now, we've heard that the hobby is dying and that no one wants to fly airplanes anymore. If you want this hobby to grow, you have to be welcoming to newcomers instead of hostile, and you actually have to make an effort at being a decent person to them. Gyros absolutely do not fly an airplane for you. They can't. Even the best gyro does not fly a plane in anything but the best straight line that it can approximate. We suspect the first generation of fly-by-wire pilots dealt with similar complaints. You're not flying because the flight computer is doing it for you. Obviously, we know that's nonsense. Blue Angels pilots don't stop being skilled because the flight control computer helps keep the Hornet stabilized. Your skill isn't contingent upon your model's gyro, it just helps smooth out turbulence and on occasion it makes an unstable model flight worthy just like a flight computer does for modern fighter aircraft. So now that we've got the F-18 back up in the air with gyro stabilized ailerons, I think you can see how much more stable it is throughout its flight envelope. Maneuvering is crisp, not sluggish, wing rocking is kept to a minimum. It looks and it feels better to fly like this. Does that look better up there now? Yeah, I know, it looks awesome. Still feels very unstable upside down, but the ailerons are helping counteract the instability. Now, watch how much more stable it is with full span flaps with the ailerons stabilized versus how it was earlier with only the stabilators roll correcting.
it's really a night and day difference. Now pardon me while I make the scuttle of shame and push the F-18 into takeoff position. Did you see the way that, that nose lifted up? Mm-hmm. Coming straight at us. That sounded awesome. That was sick. That was sick. A lot of these maneuvers are much easier to perform without leading to weird instability that causes the jet to flop around in the sky. I don't know about you, but I personally prefer a model that flies well to a model that feels like it's actively trying to kill itself. Cobra maneuvers and Cobra spins become much easier to perform with stabilized ailerons too. There's really very few downsides to a properly configured gyro that isn't overstabilizing in the air. Just about every model will fly with additional stability that you can actually turn off by pulling the sticks in any direction. On AS3X gyros, the priority system disables the gyro when the sticks are pulled past 40% by default, meaning that any maneuvers you command a model to perform will be your skill determining the outcome of the maneuver, so long as you've held the stick input throughout. Wow. How tight that loop was. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I, I blabbered too much. You're good. I mean, it's <laughs> it's your footage. If you want to talk over it, be my guest. Mm -hmm. Trying to do heavy loaded rolls. I have to give some of those a go when I get my F18 in again. The key takeaway from all of this is that your skill determines how well you fly, not a gyro. You're not less of a pilot because you use a gyro. In many ways, you're allowing the airframe to achieve things that it may not be capable of. This Hornet could not perform that snap rudder flip because it would stall out when attempting to do so. The gyro keeps it rock solid. You see that rudder snap that I did? I had it going into loader rolls and then I added rudder. Watch this. This is just the loader rolls. See how, how tough this plane is to fly now, right? Mm hmm Gyros are a great tool to expand your skill set and perform new maneuvers that you might not have been able to perform before. Be welcoming to newcomers, not hostile. Gyros are simply another tool in our arsenal. You're not less of a pilot for using one, and you're not more of a pilot for flying without one. This hobby will only grow if we make it welcoming for everyone who might be interested. Don't be that guy who talks down to people and turns them away from one of the most fun hobbies ever created. We're sorry about the video length being a bit shorter today. Tony and I are both battling coronavirus, and I need to go rest. We'll see you guys again next Wednesday.